What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. VP Tactical here. Appreciate all the love and support, and again, everyone uh, stopping by my channel. If you haven't had a chance yet, you like my content, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Stay tuned for future stuff. Um, so today we're actually just doing a follow-up video on the rare breed trigger that we had tested out. And overall, I gotta say, this thing is pretty cool. Um, needless to say, tried it in a couple of different variations in, in terms of just the mechanical setup um, according to the manufacturer you may or may not have to tweak or tune different things on your rifle uh, in order to actually get it to function properly and so i ran it suppressed unsuppressed um, and actually even before so it looks like what was recommended to try was an h3 buffer so that was one of the things that actually i had already swapped into the rifle using a standard carbine spring and so H3 buffer, carbine spring, this thing actually worked pretty fluidly. With the suppressor, gun absolutely loved it. I mean, this thing just chewed through ammo like it was nobody's business. Um, definitely gets hot, no question about that. I think, which you could probably, to be expected, you know, when you've got a cyclic rate that's gonna be up, uh, up much higher like that. Uh, but what was interesting I noticed about this, and again, it's just it's going to take some tweaking and tuning. I had an H2 in there prior before, and a big part of that's because I'm running the suppressor, and sometimes I run it unsuppressed. Most of the time I run it suppressed because I have a... Um, not a flash hider, but excuse me, a uh, comp on the end. So anyway, sorry. So a comp on the end of it, so it's actually obnoxiously loud. Um, and so... That being said, once in a while I'll run it unsuppressed, sometimes I do it suppressed. But my findings running this particular uh, setup though with the H3 and the carbine spring is that it actually liked the higher back pressure and that seemed to make it run really well. Um, I noticed some hiccups um, when I was running it unsuppressed. And a good part of it could be because, you know, maybe I need to, again, you know, tweak and tune with the buffers. Because I have actually have a couple of different styles I could have thrown in there, H2, H1, so on and so forth. Um, and then even the factory one that came from, from Palmetto. Uh, but it did seem, like I said, like that additional back pressure. Uh, and a good part of it, like I said, could be the fact that I need to, I need to mess with those or and or um, get an adjustable gas block, which that should make things run much smoother. Um, this is on a 10 and a half inch, so that could also be part of it too. Um, there could be a lot of different variables. So if you happen to pick up one of these triggers, not, you know, before jumping right to the manufacturer to say, well, it's not working, you know, try to look at, some of those different aspects to see, you know, okay, well, what are other people doing that have similar setups of mine, so on and so forth, before you jump to the conclusion saying that, you know, it's broken or it's not working, what have you, um, or it's not functioning quite like it should. So, because I did notice, like I said, when I was running unsuppressed, um, it would do a little burst and then it would kind of hang up, um, you know, only fire off one shot. Um, and, you know, just that was seemed to be kind of a normal thing. So, Again, it's just gonna take some tweaking and tuning and more time under the under the belt with it. Uh, I think at this point I only ran about 140, 160-ish rounds um, during that particular range day session. Wasn't there for very long, so, and you probably imagine that that ammo actually goes really quick, but didn't wanna get in some, some pist pistol practice while I was there too. It's been a little while since I've been to the range. So just like anything else, you know, when it comes to our craft of shooting, we wanna stay proficient. Um, whatever that might look like and you know, your own personal experiences. But nonetheless, um, post up a little video so that way you guys can actually see uh, me shooting it and kind of like what that looks like. So um, stay tuned and I'm going to post that here now. So hopefully that was uh, insightful. You got to see, like I said, at least how it operates. Um, the videos that I that I did were with it suppressed because again, that's when it was functioning the best without spending the time, you know, being out on, you know, the desert or playing around, so to speak, um, you know, in a different area where I've got more time. I'm not limited being at the actual indoor range because there's a lot of people that were trying to get in and out of there. Um, you know, I'll have more time to kind of play around with it too. Uh, so. Hopefully, like I said, that was at least insightful to you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely drop them down below. Uh, I know some folks were mentioning before that, you know, that little return spring in the very back, you know, if you wiggled it like I did, you were going to have some serious issues. Mine functioned flawlessly, um, at least suppressed anyway. And again, that just tells me that there's some other things that need to be changed and or, uh, 
you know, adjusted potentially in order to compensate for it being suppressed versus unsuppressed. And, I, and again, I think a big part of that's due to you know, more than likely not having an adjustable block or again, kind of figuring out what recipe, so to speak, works the best. So again, hopefully you like this video, you know, definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, if you like my content, you haven't subscribed yet, like I said, definitely hit that so like and subscribe button. Really appreciate all the love and support. Um, I'll try to continue to put down videos, you know, as soon as I possibly can. And, you know, when I've got new things to report or update on or, you know, just testing out new equipment. Um, I will have a video coming soon on a PSA AK. So stay tuned for that one. That's going to be a good one. Um, really excited about that particular product. Not any affiliation with PSA, just happen to like their products. They're, you know, solid, I think, for the money, in my opinion. I think you get a lot of value in that regards and it's not bottom of the barrel. I mean, there's definitely stuff out there that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole, but that's a whole nother story in and of itself. Um, but yeah, definitely stay tuned and appreciate all the, like I said, all the love and support. Be safe and stay vigilant.